Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth from Cruise Blog. Today, I'm going to share 11 things I wish I knew before my first Carnival Cruise. Let's get into it. Having sailed on over a dozen cruises, I would not consider myself a novice cruiser. If you were to ask me anything about a Royal Caribbean ship, I'd probably know the answer. However, just a few weeks ago, Carnival felt like a foreign language to me. I had never stepped foot on a Carnival ship proud of my cruise on board Carnival Celebration, and I honestly wasn't quite sure of what to expect. Oftentimes, new cruisers have a lot of trepidation and anxiety about their upcoming sailing, and I was definitely part of this group when I showed up at Miami's Terminal F on Embarkation Day. After seven nights on board, I learned some valuable lessons that I'm really excited to share with you all today. First, there was always a casual vibe, even on Elegant Night. For my cruise, I packed like I was going on a Royal Caribbean ship, meaning my wardrobe consisted of a dress, jeans and nicer tops, heels, and dressy sandals. After the first night, it was evident that the vibe on board was much more casual than I'm used to. I actually saw some people wearing athleisure clothing to dinner, and one girl even wore bed slippers. After the first couple nights, I found myself wishing that I had brought some of my favorite everyday outfits so I would not have had to get dressed up each evening. Another mistake I made was going to Guy's Burger Joint on Embarkation Day. Typically, I don't have to take too much time to acquaint myself with the ship on Embarkation Day. Since this was my first time on a carnival ship, I had no idea where anything was. So my mission after visiting my muster station was to find something to eat. With so many complimentary options, I was honestly a bit overwhelmed. Not only was there the standard cruise buffet, but Big Chicken, Blue Iguana Cantina, and Guy's Burger Joint were all open too. I had heard a lot of great things about Guy's, so when I stumbled upon it during my self-guided ship tour, I couldn't resist the thought of a juicy burger and a side of fries. What I did not expect was an hour-long wait. The line was all the way back near the drink machines, but I thought it would move much faster than it actually did. The couple behind me said the line reminded them of Six Flags. At a certain point, I was committed and didn't want to feel like I had wasted so much of my first day on board. This is why it's so important to evaluate all of your dining options before making any decisions. While my straight up burger was delicious, it was not worth the time I spent in line. Something else I wish I had known was the importance of getting to the Lido deck early for the sail away party, especially if you want to drink from a nearby bar or prime viewing spot. When I got to Red Frog on the Lido deck, I ended up waiting close to 30 minutes for a drink. Looking back, I should have gotten my drink elsewhere before going to the sail away party, so I could have used the time waiting in line to find a better spot to watch the festivities. While my spot wasn't the worst, I would have preferred to not be standing on the stairs leading from deck 16 to 17, because there were constantly people brushing up on my back. One thing that surprised me about my first carnival cruise was how good the food was. Food is one of the most talked about topics for cruisers. Of course though, everyone has different tastes and preferences, so my favorite dishes might be someone else's least favorite. I was a little hesitant about Carnival's food because I had only heard pretty negative things about it. However, once I was on board, I was surprised by just how delicious everything really was. I had cruised the week before on Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas and was disappointed by the quality of the food, from the Windjammer Buffet to the main dining room. The food on Carnival Celebration was a complete 180. For a ship that can hold over 6,000 people at maximum capacity, the quality of the food was similar to a ship that should hold about half. New Carnival cruisers should be aware that you're required to print your boarding pass rather than downloading it to your phone. Even though I've been on over a dozen cruises, I always find embarkation day to be a little stressful, especially if it's at a terminal that I'm unfamiliar with. Since I'm so used to cruising with Royal Caribbean, I have become accustomed to saving my boarding pass to my mobile wallet on my iPhone. Carnival, however, makes you print out your boarding pass. During the physical check-in process, it's stamped by a port agent. Something else different with Carnival was that they don't have e-muster drills. Personally, I think e-muster drills make embarkation day a little bit less stressful. I had issues finding my muster station on Carnival Celebration. The Hub app was telling me to go to the Punchline or Comedy Club, however, there was nobody there. It ended up being moved to Piano Bar 88, which was just across the hall. When I got there, I was told that I would have to watch a brief safety demonstration about how to use a life jacket. Later in the afternoon, after the emergency signal was broadcasted, there was a long stream of announcements that lasted roughly five minutes. I love that I could check in for dinner through Carnival's mobile app. As someone who frequently selects Royal Caribbean's flexible My Time Dining option, I think Carnival's flexible Anytime Dining wins hands down. While you can't make reservations in advance, you are able to check in via the Hub app when you're ready to eat and see the approximate wait time. 
I really liked not having to plan my dinners in advance. My fear with Royal Caribbean's My Time Dining is if that I fail to make a reservation, I'll end up waiting a long time to be seated. While there was still a wait on board Carnival Celebration, I had the ability to check in while getting ready in my stateroom or sipping on a pre-dinner drink at Alchemy Bar. One regret I have though, is not checking the menus for dinner in the dining room ahead of time. If I had, I would have not eaten at Chebang and Cucina del Capitano first. It's important that you ride Bolt as soon as possible. Typically, I try and cross off all of my must-do activities early on during the cruise. If there's a show or activity that I have my heart set on, I don't want to be disappointed later on if it's canceled due to inclement weather or another unforeseen circumstance. During my sailing on Carnival Celebration, I was almost unable to ride Bolt. I saved it for the last day of the cruise, which was a sea day. And while the ride was supposed to open at 9am, strong winds kept it closed until later in the afternoon. Thankfully, I reserved a 1pm time slot early that morning, so my reservation was honored once it opened. Had it remained closed, I would have missed out on my chance to ride a roller coaster on a cruise ship. Whether it's Bolt, Sky Ride, Sky Course, or even just mini golf, make sure you take time early on during your cruise to cross off any of the activities you've been looking forward to the most. Something else I learned about cruising with Carnival is that the app is essentially useless until you're on board. There's not much you can do with Carnival's mobile app until you're on board and connected to the ship's Wi-Fi. Leading up to your Carnival cruise, the app shows a countdown to your sailing whenever you open it. If you try and click on one of the links to book any cruise add-ons, you're redirected to your web browser. Speaking of cruise add-ons, some, like specialty restaurants, are cheaper on board Carnival than other cruise lines I've sailed with. I honestly regret not trying any specialty restaurants on board Carnival Celebration. I wish I had paid a little bit extra to see how the specialty experience compared to not only their complimentary options, but to other cruise line specialty restaurants as well. The expense was minimal compared to other lines. I'd certainly pay $48 for a steakhouse meal or $38 for a fun teppanyaki experience. Everyone who dined at Bonsai Teppanyaki raved about it too. On the second to last morning, I decided to spend $7.08, including gratuity, to eat breakfast at Emerald's Bistro. The crepes were one of the best things that I ate that entire week, and if I ever find myself on another Excel class ship again, they're on my must-do list, probably more than once. It's important to line up for entertainment at least 30 minutes before the event is scheduled to begin. I found 30 minutes to be the sweet spot for shows, whether they were in the center stage, punchline or comedy club, or grand spectrum theater. I was told that most people start lining up for the most magnificent circus about an hour before the show began, with doors opening 15 minutes prior. With that knowledge, I got to center stage around 6.40 p.m., the crew members let us find our seats just minutes later, and there was never any chaos. Another time, I got in line for a show at the Punchliner Comedy Club about 10 to 15 minutes before doors opened. Even though I was standing back near Java Blue, I was easily able to find a seat in the third row. If you have a preference on where you'd want to sit, I do recommend lining up no later than 30 minutes before. However, if you don't mind how close you are, 15 minutes prior should suffice for most onboard entertainment. What I learned while sailing on board my first ever Carnival cruise certainly helped me come more prepared for my second sailing on Carnival Vista. Like with any cruise though, it's important that you learn to adapt, as no two sailings will ever be the same. That's all for now everyone, until next time, happy cruising from all of us at Cruise Blog.